All right. Well, um, it's kind of been an eventful day so far, and um, I'm 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 excited about what God has, what He's doing for WRC, and uh, what He continues to do. And and we don't know all the next steps. And uh, you know, I was as shocked as you were when Jeremy walked in my office and sat down. And but I just know God's got a plan, and I don't know what it is. But if He's not obedient, we can't be obedient. And so I just appreciate Jeremy's heart. Uh, man, I just I just love that family so much. I know I keep saying that, but it is so true. I just love them so much, and I just can't wait to see what God does through them. And you guys are a part of that. And so thank you for being a part of their life. This morning we're going to uh, wrap up Ephesians. So this is Ephesians 6, and there's no chapter 7. Do you guys know what's coming next week? Me neither. I have no clue. <laughs> I have no idea yet, but I think I have something in the chamber that God wants me to share with you. Um, this morning, I want to share a couple of thoughts with you out of, out of Ephesians chapter 6. And so Paul has given us all of this incredible information about who we are in Christ and, and how we can walk in power and all those things. And then he gets to uh, verse, chapter 6, and we're going to jump in. We're going to start at verse 10 and read through verse 20. But let me just, we're going to break this down. Look at verse 10. It says, this is the final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Be strong in the Lord. So he says, I want you to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, not in your, your own strength, but in his strength. Uh, and so he, what he's saying is we, we, we have a battle to fight. We're going to war. We, I've told you all these things for five chapters to get you ready, to let you know that we have a fight that we have to go towards. We have to, we have to move in that direction. We have a fight. We have a battle to fight. And so he was very clear in this. He said, this is a final word. Let me just tell you, I want you to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Um, and so I'm going I'm to give you a word today. i got four things out of this passage I want to share with you today. Um, so I want to I wanna give these to you because I think it's important. I want you to know that you're in a fight, but here's the cool thing about this fight. Here's number one that I see in this passage right here in verse 10. Is you're not fighting in your might. You're not fighting in your might. This is not your strength. I mean, by the way, I just, I've done this before. Have you ever fought something in your own strength spiritually? You ever just you ever try to use your charisma? You ever try to use your strength? You ever try to use your abilities and your knowledge? It will wear you out. It will. Because you, you, you don't have enough charisma to beat the devil by yourself. You just don't. You might be that good. You might be that good looking, but you ain't good enough to beat the devil by yourself. You have to be strong in his might. We're not fighting in our own might. I, I love that. You don't have to worry about your strength because you're going to fight in his strength. I love the passage about David. Listen to uh, 1 Samuel. Look at this. It says, David encouraged and strengthened himself in the Lord. David encouraged and strengthened himself. You don't have to have me to encourage you in the Lord. You don't need a small group. Now, it's, in, it's important, and you should do it, but you can do it yourself. You don't have to wait for your spouse, your small group leader, or myself. You can strengthen yourself in the Lord, your God. I just love that. I love that we can strengthen ourselves, and here's how you do that. You know how you do that? Get into the Word. Well, not this Word. This is Gen Z. Hang on. Have y'all seen this thing? This is the Gen Z Bible. We're going to read a passage in just a minute. I'm giving you a chance to slip out if you need to. But, but you, better, you better get into the Word. You want to strengthen yourself in the Lord? You, you, need, to know, you need to know some scripture. That, that is a, one of our weapons, and we'll share with that here in just a second toward the end of this chapter. Uh, another thing about this strength is it comes from joy. Look at this. Look at Nehemiah chapter 8. Nehemiah said, go and enjoy some choice food and sweet drinks. This is a scripture I can get behind right here. Come on. This is a good word. This is, this is, what he's saying here is, just read between the lines. If you read the Gen Z, it says Dairy Queen right here. All right. Go and enjoy some choice food and some sweet. I wouldn't call Dairy Queen choice food. Maybe first choice or Sam's choice. But I want you to, I want you to go and enjoy some good food and sweet drinks. And all of this, watch this, don't miss this, and send some to those who have nothing prepared. So we say there needs to be a celebration that happens because look at what he says next. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Some of y'all have been defeated because you're walking around like Eeyore. You're just walking around mopey and sad and mad and angry and every little thing's getting on your nerves. Listen, your battle is not with the shopping cart at Walmart. Those things are hard to get out. I'd much rather go to Target. Just, it's, it's so smooth. You ever just pull one out of Target and go, Walmart needs to get their stuff together. That's not your battle. Have you ever thought that was your battle? You ever have a bad day because your shoes got muddy on the way to your house? And you're just like, oh, what a horrible day. Really? We think that our battle is all these things. And he's saying right here, if you want to have real strength, you better have real joy. 
You better have real joy. And I'm talking about joy that's deep down, joy that, that nobody can put out, not even a rainy day, not even a, a mini hurricane, because that's what we had this last week. I saw a post that said that the hurricanes are having tryouts. <laughs> They're having scrimmages. That's funny right there. I just don't know if it felt like it. Water was hitting windows. It ain't never hit in my house before. That was crazy. But you still, you got to have joy. We got to have joy in this battle. That is our strength. Look at, look at verse 11. Back to our passage in Ephesians 6. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. Now, there's a reason you have to put this armor on. It's because the devil is very, very slick. He is very slick. This word, another, another translation says wiles. Uh, to, to be very slick, to be very cunning. Uh, that's why it's called wily coyote. He's, he's wild. He, he's very slick. He ends up with a rock on top of him or a piano or something all the time or a rocket knocks him down. Y'all know wily coyote? Y'all know what I'm talking about? The road runner? Okay. He's, he's, he's always trying, cunning, trying to get, make something happen. And let me just tell you, the devil is as defeated as Wiley Coyote is. But these strat- this word for strategy is very interesting. I looked this up. This was, this was encouraging to me and, and, and actually helped me see some things the way the devil is looking at it. Look at this. The word for strategy in the original language comes from two words. Put together means after in journey. Here's what I think the devil does. He, he, he wants to show up just in time. You're at the end of your journey, and you are worn out and worn down, and you don't care anymore. Or you just had a big win. Man, you just had this journey. It was a big win. You let your guard down. You know how many leaders and how many football teams and, and basketball teams and, and politicians had a big win and then let their guard down and got defeated? So, so it's after in journey, which is interesting to me. So, so he's very slick. He has strategies, and he's watching you to see if you're going to slip up. He's looking for those temptations he can get a hold of that he can beat, beat you up and bring you down with. But again, we're not fighting in our own might. We're fighting in his might. Um, look, at the, look what the Bible says in James. Look at James chapter 1, verses 13 through 15. So remember, when you're being tempted, don't say that God's tempting you. God's never tempted to do wrong. Never, uh, God is never tempted to do wrong. He never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from your own desires. Your temptations come from when inside you. The devil just finds out what they are, and he knows where you keep your goat, and he goes after it. He knows exactly where to get you. He knows where your temptations lie. The devil doesn't tempt me to steal because I'm not a thief. I'm not. He doesn't tempt me. Well, he tempts me in other ways. I, I can be a selfish person, so he tempts me to be selfish. He knows, he knows where to keep my goat. And I'm going to tell you, your temptation comes from within. It's already inside of you. Look at the rest of this, the rest of this passage. They're inside of you, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. The devil is very slick, and he knows where you keep your goat, and he's coming after you. And he is going to get to the end of that journey and wait for you to be worn out and worn down. Y'all, y'all temptation is so powerful, but there's, there's a section of temptation. There's a part of temptation that makes it even more powerful, and I want to give this to you because I think it's going to help you. Um, the power of temptation is in its timing. The power of temptation is in its timing. Listen, you think David just happened to see Bathsheba? He wasn't even supposed to be there. In fact, the Bible says that he was surprised by her beauty. He wasn't looking for her, but he saw her. Why? Because he was in a place he wasn't, wasn't supposed to be. He, the Bible says that when time where kings go off the war, he didn't go off the war. There was a perfect timing for the devil to make sure that he was tempted with his own. It was already inside of him. And as you know the story, he, he got Bathsheba pregnant. He had uh, Uriah killed, which was her husband. And, uh, and, and then God began to do some things in his life to clear all that up, and then God made him a great king again. King again. But here's what the Bible says. He was still a man after God's own heart. He was still a man after God's own heart. Listen, the t- power of temptation is in its timing. And so the devil's going to wait and wait and wait until you, you, get your, you put your guard down and you're ready to, to take a step or, or look at something you shouldn't look at or go somewhere you shouldn't go or take a drink or something you shouldn't be taking a drink of. And he's going to get you with peer pressure and all these other things. The power of temptation is in the timing. The devil knew this. He knows this. Look, look at this. is the story of Jesus. Look at Matthew 4. And the first four verses it says that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. Jesus was led by the Spirit to go be tempted by the devil after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. He was hungry. I guess so. Fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. He was hungry. Watch this. The tempter came. I love this. It's called the tempter here. He came and said to him, this is what he said, if you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. He put an if-then if statement on him. If this is really who you are, then do this. Listen, you ain't got to play those games with the devil. You ain't got to play those games with him. 
He was putting the if then on if you are. In other words, if you don't turn these, these stones into bread, then you must not be the son of God. They don't care what the devil thinks. Who cares what the devil? I don't care what the devil thinks. Who cares? But he caught Jesus, the Bible says, 40 days into it, and he was hungry. And I love Jesus' response. Look at this. But Jesus said to him, he told him, no, the scripture says, people don't live by bread alone, but every word or rhema or spoken word that comes out of the mouth of God. Listen, you are not fighting in your own might. You're fighting in his. You're fighting with his words. You're fighting with his uh, revelation. That's what rhema is. Rhema is a spoken word that God gives you. You can read the logos, the written word, and he will give you a spoken word. He'll give you a word just for you, a revelation that means something for you in your time. That's why you can read the Bible. I, listen, I can get up here and preach a sermon on one verse. Scott Davis get up here and preach a, ver- a sermon on the same verse. would be a different message. My dad get up here and preach a different message on the same verse. Why? Because it's alive and active. And he says, don't, don't, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna fight the devil off by every word that comes out of the mouth of God, which is a rhema, is a spoken word. So we don't fight with our own mind. Here's the second thing I see in this passage is you're not fighting in this world. You're not fighting in this world. This is not a, you are, your fight is not with the Karens at work, okay? Your fight is not with that cousin that you're going to see in a few months when you go to a family reunion. That's not your battle. You're not fighting a battle in this world. That's what he goes to tell us. Look at, look at verse 12 in our passage. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of, unseen, of the unseen world. Let me stop right here and say this. There are levels of authority in the demonic world, just like there are levels of angels. Uh, Michael was an archangel, so he was up high. So you have, uh, you have these levels. And so we were fighting battles against demonic spirits of different levels of authority. And so that's why we, you know, people say this, and I can't say this really true in Scripture, but it sounds good. Uh, when you reach new levels, you get new devils, all right? That's what they say in the leadership world. When you reach new levels, you get new devils. And I would just say you're going to have devils, whether you're ready for it or not, whether you want them or not. They're coming after you and your family. They want to stop you from, from reading the word, from worshiping. They tried to keep you from coming to church this morning. You thought it was just your kid acting crazy. Maybe they are crazy. Maybe you do need to discipline a little bit. But the devil's trying to stop you from what you see. Let me just tell you, stop focusing on what you see. Stop focusing on, it's not, this is not a world, we're not fighting the battle in this world. It's the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world, against evil spirits in heavenly places. And we want to train you up. This is a battle, y'all. He says this, this is a final word, we have a battle to fight. That's what he says to start this whole passage. We are fighting a battle, and you better be ready. You better be ready. We want to help get you ready for, for warfare. And I'm going to tell you right now, uh, let me just tell you this morning, Life Group will help you get ready for warfare. Can I get a witness on some life group? <laughs> life group will help get you ready for warfare. In fact, summer, summer semester opens today, so you can actually go on the app and sign up. Not right now while I'm preaching because it's going to be good. i got to get stuff to tell you. But sign up today. We have groups you can go sign up for. And so, so sign up today because we want to help get you ready. So this ain't, I ain't up here just telling you we're in a battle and not giving you any tools. We're going to give you tools in life group. Well, well my group, we just kind of we can hang out and just read a word and pray a little bit. There you go. Do you know if you just read the word a little bit and pray a little bit, it'll turn into a lot of word and a lot of prayer? That's what happens. We, we, say, we say that our groups have to have ESPN. That's what makes them a group, ESPN, not, not the TV show. Or is that a channel? That's a channel. Encouragement, scripture, prayer, next steps. Encouragement, man, you need to be encouraged. The, devil, the world's trying to beat you up, beat you down. You need to have be encouraged. Encouragement, scripture, read the word. It could be one, one, one verse of scripture could change everything. Scripture and prayer, we want to pray for one another. Uh, we call it the circle of love in our small group. You, if you got a prayer request, you're going to be in the circle of love. We're going to put you in there. We're going to surround you, lay hands on you. We're going to pray for it. That's what the Bible tells us to do. Pray first. We make it the last resort. And then we have uh, encouragement, uh, scripture, prayer, and then next steps. We want to challenge you. to. If you haven't been through growth track, go through growth track. If you haven't been water baptized, that's your next step. If you haven't locked into a group, that's your next step. Whatever your next step is, we're going to help you take that. It's very, very important. Here's the third thing I see in this passage, and that's this. You are not fighting with your weapons. You're not fighting with your weapons. I just already mentioned this a little bit, but it's not your own charisma. It's not your own power. It's not your own willpower. It's not your own abilities. You're not fighting with your weapons. Look, look at what he says in verse 13 of our passage. He says, therefore... Because we have this battle going on. Put on every piece of God's armor, not some of it, not the ones that's comfortable, not just the helmet of salvation. Y'all, if you put the helmet of salvation on without the rest of it, you're going to be in trouble. You need the helmet of salvation, but you need everything else. 
Look at this. Every piece of not your armor, but God's armor. This is God's armor that we're putting on every single day. So you'll be able to resist the enemy in a time of evil. Are we living in a time of evil today? The Bible says that they'll call right, wrong, and wrong, right? It's correct. You've got to be careful everything that you say. When you say it, how you say it, who you said it to, who was recording you when you said it. You, you, you can't pick and choose these things because we have a battle going on, and it's a time of evil right now. You can't just pick a couple of pieces and go, yeah, I'll leave this field of faith for later. No, you better pick that thing up. You better pick the sword up. We'll get to that here in just a second. But we're living in a time of evil. Then after the battle, you'll still be standing firm. Look at the next verse. Verse 14, stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. Now, I do want to spend just a moment on this passage right here, on the, on this, on the body armor, because it's so important. The, uh, the breastplate of righteousness, is, NLT calls it body armor. That's more of modern uh, phrasing. When I hear body armor, I think, I think about a, a bulletproof vest. Um, you want to put that on. Because when you have on the, the breastplate of righteousness, the devil can't tempt you to think that you are somebody that you're not. The devil wants you to believe that you ain't worthy to stay in the presence of God. But because of Jesus, you are. So, so I want to spend just a minute here because it's important. I don't have time to get to all of them today. But the body armor of God's righteousness is so, so powerful. Look at what Romans says about righteousness. Romans chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. But people are counted as righteous not because of their work. Now, a lot of religions get this wrong. You do good things, you get good stuff. That is not what the Bible teaches. Now, if you have faith, you're going to do Paul said, show, I'll show you my faith by my works, but faith comes first. I don't do works to get faith. Look at what he says. He says, we are counted as righteous, not because of their work, but because of their faith in God who forgives sinners. It's not by works, but by faith that you receive righteousness. Listen, I am righteous today, not because of who I am, but because of whose I am. I belong to him, and he makes me righteous. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm almost there personally, like my own stuff. Like I'm, 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 I'm real close. Ask my wife. I'm real close to being perfect. That wasn't supposed to be funny. <laughs> yeah, I'm not talking about, now, I should live right. We have personal righteousness. We should, we should do some things right. Should, we should say the right things and not lie, not cheat, not steal, not lust. We should do all those things, absolutely. But I am righteous. My spirit is righteous today. It is made perfect because of my trust and faith in God, who it says here, forgive sinners. So David also spoke of this when he described the happiness of those who are declared righteous without working for it. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to earn it. And some of y'all are just wearing yourself out trying to earn righteousness. You can't do it. You can never be good enough. The Bible says, if, uh, Jesus says, if you even have a bad thought, it's sin. If you even lust upon a woman, it's adultery. Now, if you've never done that, then maybe you have a chance to get in there. I would say everybody in this room has had a sin in their life. In fact, I know you have because the Bible says you have. The Bible says for all have sin and come short of the glory of God. You can't get to heaven on your own righteousness. You get it on his, and we got his because we put faith in it. And it says that we are declared righteous without working for it. And that is completely opposite of what the world will tell you. Complete opposite of what the world will tell you. You got to earn it. You got to do better. You got to do more. No, you just have that faith in the one who forgives sinners. That's all you got to do. This is just one piece of armor, y'all. Let's keep going. Look at verse 15. For shoes put on peace that comes from God's good news, from the good news, so that you will be fully prepared. Let me just give you a quick question. This is just a little, little test here. Does peace follow you? Or does chaos follow you? Is there chaos in your family? Is there chaos at your house? Is there chaos at work? And you may be pointing at other people, but they point back at you. So do you walk in this peace? It's an important, important piece of our armor that we put on. We have to be fully prepared because of this peace. Then he says this. Look at the next verse. Verse 16, in addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. And then it says this, put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Y'all, we have to be ready. We have to be prepared for what the devil wants to bring. We have to be prepared. I'm telling you, you can't wait until the battle starts. You can't be in the, in the deep depths of the battle and then decide to start putting some stuff on. You need to wake up and put it on. Read and apply the word. Read the word and then apply it. It's very important to do. And if you want, you can read the Gen Z Bible. 
It's Gen Z print, too. This is Gen Z version. Our fight isn't with the people against the cosmic forces messing with our world, spiritual drama in high places. Suit up so you can stand your ground in the face of evil, and when, it, when it's all said and done, just stand. Stand tall with the truth as your belt and righteousness as your armor, and keep those kicks of gospel ready for peace. Kick his shoes, by the way, if you didn't know. Grab that face shield and block the devil's fiery trash talk. Top it off with the salvation helmet and the word of God as your weapon. Stay in the spirit, praying for each other and staying alert. And throw some prayers my way that I can drop truth bombs fearlessly as I should. <laughs> truth bombs, baby. I feel like I got to put my, my Bible on top of that one. <laughs> Just so we're all good. Lord, you see, see what we got here? Wait, what, even, even Gen C says, we're in a battle. Get your kicks of peace ready. Get your shield of faith ready. You better be ready because the devil, the devil is throwing some, some fiery tr uh, trash talking darts at you. And if he ain't throwing them at you, throw them at somebody else trying to get them to start something. Y'all, we need to be ready. We need to stand firm, stand strong in our armor. Put all these on every day. If you don't have them memorized, go memorize them. They're super easy. Helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, belt of truth, sandals of peace, shield of faith, and sword of the spirit. You need them every day. And then I would say you need to actually practice your battle posture. You need to practice standing strong. You can't be ready, wait until the day of the battle and go, well, what do I do now with the sword? Like, you're looking at it funny. It's looking back at you like, you going to use this thing or what? You got to be ready. When you go to any kind of training, I've been through a little bit of, uh, a little bit of uh, training with, you know, not military, but like uh, security stuff uh, for the church. And, and, and they'll tell you, look, if you, if you pack heat, if you have a concealed weapon, practice drawing it in the mirror. Just because when it comes, you ain't practice, you don't know, you'll be fumbling, you'll be dead three times before you even get something out of your pocket. You got to practice. Like, are you ready? Are you ready for the next thing? I, I play sports. Uh, growing up, I played shortstop, and man, every single play I looked, okay, I got a runner on first. If it comes to me, I'm tossing here for two outs. I'm just going to go to first. If there's a runner on second and, and it's a deep shot, I'm trying to go home with it. I'm going to be the cutoff. Like, I'm already thinking through what I'm going to do. You better be ready because the devil's coming. You better be ready. And I ain't trying to scare you. I'm just telling you the Bible says that we are in a battle, and you better be ready. Look at what it says. Let's keep, let's keep reading. Look at, look at um, Let's jump ahead. We're going to jump ahead a couple slides there, Ryan. Look at the fourth thing that I see in this. This is so important. You are fighting not only just for you. You are not fighting only for you. We're in a battle, but it ain't just about you. It ain't just about you. Look at what it says. This is how he finishes off the chapter. Look at this. Or these verses. Look at verse 18. Pray in the Spirit at all times on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. It ain't just about you. Look at the next one. Look at verse 19. And pray for me also. I ask God, to get, ask God to give me the right words so I can boldly explain God's mysterious plan for the good news for those Jews and Gentiles alike. And then it finishes off with this. I am in chains now, still preaching this message as God's ambassador, so I pray that I will keep on speaking boldly for him as I should. He said, just, Paul was saying, it ain't about me. We're in a battle, Yes. We are fighting, yes. We have some struggles, yes. We have these things. That's absolutely true. We have these things going on, but it ain't just about you. It's about next generation. It's about the next generation, y'all. It ain't just about you. It's about your kids. It's about your grandkids. Listen, I pray for my kids all the time, and I pray for my grandkids all the time. Do you know why? Because we were in a battle, and it ain't just about me. It doesn't stop with me. Y'all, we have to have a successor. We have to have a successor. We have to have somebody behind us that knows what we know, that's teaching what we teach, that's standing on the word of God, that's standing on what he says, not what the world says. Yeah, we, we have to be ready, and we have to hand that off because I have learned that success without a successor is failure in disguise. You better know. You better know. You better know what you believe. You better know why you believe it. And you better be ready to pass it on to the next generation. You better be ready. The devil ain't taking no breaks. The devil ain't stopping. The devil ain't waiting for you to get your armor on in the middle of a battle. He's coming after you and your family. He's coming after the dignity of marriage. 
He's coming after the identity of every single person, whether they be boys or girls. Y'all, he's going all the way down to the core of their beliefs of who they are. If he's got you that confused at that level, he can just destroy your life. God created you on purpose and for a purpose. And you better know what you believe. Y'all, this is, we're not playing games. We don't have time. We don't have time. You don't have time to play church. I don't have time to play church anymore. I'm 47 years old. We don't have time. Jesus is coming back soon. We better be ready for the battle because the battle is coming to us. There's a battle in your home right now. There's a battle in your house. There's video games that you're playing that shouldn't be in your house. There's board games in your house you need to go home and clear out. We're in the middle of a battle, and you're playing games. You're playing church. And I'm going to tell you, this is a very real battle against a very real enemy who wants to do nothing more than destroy you and your family. Will you just do me a favor and just pray and say, Lord, what do I need to, what do I need to get rid of in my life? What do I need to take out? What, what, what is it that I need to focus on the next six weeks or eight weeks or ten weeks? And then be obedient. Be like Jeremy and say, you know what? It don't look right. It don't feel right. My, my friends are going to laugh at me, but I'm doing it anyway. This is a real battle, and we better be ready because it's coming. If it ain't at your door, it's on the way. Be ready. Be ready. Be ready.